I'm Joyce Hornady. You might say accuracy is my business. I make bullets. You are listening to the Hornady Podcast. Thanks for joining us and enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning into the Hornady Podcast. We appreciate you on this episode. We're excited about it. We got a great, I'd say a good smatter, smattering of, of guests on the show that are going to span what I'm presuming is several different answers to this question. We're going to dive right into it. To my left, Preston Lent for Marketeer and across the table, Director of Marketing, Neil Davies and Project Engineer, Mike Jensen. Guys, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Pleasure. Yeah. This yeah, is, I'm just glad Mike's here because, yeah, this is fantastic. There's, there's, a couple, there's a couple. There's a couple years of knowledge going on to my right here. Yeah, yeah. and and the folks don't know what we're talking about yet. Not yet. I am yeah, so true. interested in your answer. I am, and that's why I said a good smattering of guests because we're going to get smattering. Yeah, a small little pieces of knowledge from different places mm-hmm. all in one spot here because I think we'll all have probably pretty different answers. At least I hope we will, and it's something that we're setting up our future podcast guests for that we're going to ask this question before we sign off because people want to know. Yeah, If there's uh, ever a new guest, you're probably going to get asked this question. You're going to get asked this question. And really this stemmed from the interaction that we've we've got from the listeners. Uh, Podcast at Hornady.com. That's the email address. If you've got questions, concerns, podcast ideas, send them that way. And this came in via email mm-hmm. right there podcast at hornady.com you could also drop a comment on here that helps us out a ton but this came in uh preston saw it come through on that email address and thought it's probably worth asking everybody yeah so uh, the gentleman wrote in he de- didn't necessarily think we maybe we do this for a whole podcast but it's certainly a question worth asking mm-hmm. and of course we'll kind of set our own boundaries but his thought was you have one cartridge and bullet to shoot for the rest of your life now, this is not necessarily end of days, times, and or bullet, anything huh? like that, but yeah. the bullet counts too. So cartridge and bullet to shoot for the rest of your life. That's a bold question. Yep. One worth investigating. Really got to search the soul. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that being said, so you get to select it. It's not like you right. have to pick a cartridge. Like you're going to select a cartridge and that's the one that you choose, not mm-hmm. based on any other things like availability right. or- But you get to choose, you can hand load, I suppose, if you wanted to, or you can use a factory ammunition with that, uh, with that cartridge and bullet. Mm -hmm. That's, that's a bold question because of the amount of shooting that's going on right now. Mat shooting, competition shooting, target shooting, varmint hunting, big game, traveling the world. And that's why I think we've got a pretty good uh, panel here because uh, across the table, they've been all over the world hunting. So I'm Mm -hmm. curious to see how that shapes their answers. And then. Also, Neil shoots competitively pretty often. I know, Whitey, you probably did that in your day, maybe in the silhouette Uh, kind of stuff. Yeah, the silhouette silhouette competition I did. Yeah. So, without further ado, Preston, we're going to start with you. You got to pick one cartridge, one bullet, the rest of your life. What's it going to be? And and let me elaborate a little bit. I have two... Two good options in my head right now. If you make me pick one, I'll pick one. Well, walk us through your thought process. But here's my thought process. Mm Mm-hmm. I like to shoot matches. I like to shoot steel targets far away. I like to be able to take a longer shot on a critter if I cannot get closer. Um, so my thoughts are 6.5 Creedmoor with 143 grain ELDX. Because I shoot PRS style competitions. I shoot NRO Hunter. That's kind of the matches I shoot and I need to match accurate bullet. Mm-hmm. So the ELDX does that in spades. And then also is very effective on game from close to long range. Mm-hmm. So 6.5 Creedmoor is in that world. However, I do think it's a little bit light on some of the larger, larger game, which sure. I might like to hunt someday. So I'm going to throw in there the 308 Winchester and the 178 grain ELDX. Didn't see that coming. Maybe out of left field. Yeah, you could say that. That, that so, boomer cartridge? Well, so, I just, I'm I just shocked at you. I figured he would have <laughs> come up with I don't know, or it came out with something a little more, yeah, new age, well, but okay, three-way Winchester. And both of them are short action, mm-hmm. so for my match style, what you know, s- relatively small powder charge, relatively, Yeah. Um, but if I had to choose one for the rest of my life, about 40 grains of powder, mid-40s, the recoil is not that heavy, I'm still short action, I can use 10-round mags, 12-round mags, that's my thought process. Yeah. 
Oh, I, based on that, I have my own opinion of those two for that set of only one cartridge. I'm curious to see if you have to pick one, what's it going to be? Hmm. Can we come back? Oh no. my gosh, this is so yeah. hard. This is so hard. It would be hard for me. It's going to be hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me throw. I don't. My- I don't go big, big game hunting that often. Yeah, I was going to throw in my two cents here, see if it sways your answer. Because you like to shoot competitively, and you you want to hunt, you know, elk. Let's say through eight Winchester, you can still run PRS Tactical Division. You're easily going to make NRL Hunter Power Factor. Mm-hmm. And you just have that little bit bigger bullet diameter, a little more frontal diameter on something, say, like an elk. You might lose some range performance, but you would, but not the end of the world. So the 308, for exactly what you're talking about, NRL Hunter plus PRS plus the hunting, man, I did never think that I would choose that option when you first started, but well, it that, seems that's like why a good I brought option. It, that's why I brought it up. I'd, I'd probably have to say 308, just because if I want to go... Big, big game hunting, you know. You only get one for the rest of your life. And somebody says, hey, there's a brown bear hunt. I'd rather have a 308 than a 6.5 Creedmoor, personally. Of course. Yeah. So, 308, I think it is. I'd be a better shooter anyway. Have to deal with the recoil. Mm-hmm. My fundamentals would be better. Hopefully. Potentially. <laughs> That's a good answer. That was a, 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 a good thought process and one that I've been walking through as well. So, across the table, Neil, what? let's hear your thoughts. Because, like I said, you're very similar in Preston that yeah the the hunting aspect and the match setting are both important however your hunting uh escapades have spanned more than just the occasional elk hunt like Preston so you got to factor that in yeah I've walked into this whole deal thinking that (laughs) the topic was a little different uh similar but different um yeah so you know if you had to pick one cartridge and bullet weight fine you know you you don't have to rely on on getting it somewhere else in the world mm-hmm. let's say so that takes some of the consideration out of uh, you know some some things you don't need to consider anyway i mean i to be fair i agree with a lot of what you said preston um to be fair to be fair I yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's a, i mean man it's that's a this is tough when you actually get to pick the one yeah. If I if I had to settle for one, that's different. But if I have to pick the one, I mean, I still, you still would run into the issues that people have been debating over for years and years and years. Once you've, you know, you settled on this one uh, particular load, well, now you got to have that all the time. Sure. Um, 308 is tough to beat in that regard. I yeah. mean, in, the, in, the, in this whole argument, there's there's a lot of things you can do with it. Um. Now you throw out the match shooting piece. There's probably some other oh, yeah. things in there that would be part of it as well. But uh, you know, I guess you're going to try to hunt varmints. You're going to try to shoot rifle matches, presumably. You're going to shoot mid-sized game, large game. You know, there's many a moose that's fallen to the 308. So that yeah, that's absolutely. that's not wrong. Um, yeah, I don't know, <laughs> man. This is tough. I I I'd, I'd throw the the 30 out 680 grain interlock into the mix somewhere. Oh uh, yeah. Craig Bonington has said that, you know, I don't even know how many animals in Africa have succumbed to that combination. Yeah. Cause it's just, you know, medium velocity, slow, heavy bullet. I mean, it does, does a lot for you and you can hunt everything basically. I mean, I'm people have presumably shot Cape Buffalo with the 30 out six with like 220 grain bullets or something like that. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily legal in most places, but over the yeah. <laughs> over the uh, years, I'm sure somebody's given it a go. Um, yeah, well, but there's still some matches that the yeah, vintage six, sniper yeah, rifle vintage match, sniper rifle, which has kind of got a cool factor in and of itself. Yeah, and the, and the one advantage you have with the odd six is I don't care where you are in the world, somebody somewhere has got some 30 odd six ammunition, no right. doubt about it. Something. So, but that's not necessarily part of this part of this uh thought process um uh, yeah the 308 be tough to beat i mean you can do a lot of things well but you have to determine um your own limitations now right, right. so you know if i chose a 338 wind mag it's going to be kind of a rough day shooting prairie dogs yeah so, <laughs> yeah 308 308 makes a lot of sense you can do a lot with it and uh hence the reason why us and those like us in the ammunition sec- sector sell piles of ammo at 308 yeah. and yeah. and one thing i didn't mention you could have a 20 pound match rifle 25 pound match rifle 
and a nine pound mountain rifle or an eight pound mountain rifle all in three. You're not limited to the mm. number of guns you can have in this hypothetical. In oh, this hypothetical, in this, but okay, you great. get one cartridge and bullet. So, well, it's gonna be tough if we all settle on the same thing, though. This is gonna yeah. be a rough conversation. Yeah, I, would've, I, mean, I mean, I would have thought Neil uh, would have gone level heads sh- prevail straight to thirty out six. That's where I thought Neil was going. From I mean, I do, I still do. I but if 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 I had to just pick one and it would had to be something that I could show up in the you know middle of uh, uh, Nunavut or somewhere else in some remote place in the world without ammunition and have a gun that's chambered in something, yeah, it'd be thirty out six for all hunting stuff. Mm-hmm. No doubt about it. If I had to pick one for just that application, medium and big game stuff, thirty out six, hands down. Well, right. I suppose conversely, if you showed up with your thirty out six cartridges loaded with your favorite bullet there'd be a rifle there to shoot it. <laughs> yeah, somewhere. Know? Somewhere within yeah. a within a day's drive. Yeah, yeah there'd be a thirty out six collecting dust somewhere. Although yeah, uh John Snow wrote an article in Outdoor Life about a trip he did to Mongolia and he oh, ended up yeah. hunting with a uh, I think it was a Tika. I don't know. Some rigmarole foreign travel type of deal and he didn't have a rifle because he was coming from Zimbabwe or somewhere like this. And anyway he ended up with a I think as a loner Tika rifle chambered in six five Creedmoor. I'll so, be darned. Yeah, hey, out, that, out in <laughs> Mongolia. So yeah, that cartridge has transcended all things and is now just as commonplace as just about anything. But yeah, you know, if you're gonna factor in shooting elk or bigger bears, three oh eight with a heavy bullet would, would be a good uh would be a good choice. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean if if you're gonna shoot varmints and stuff, you're gonna trend to something like a three oh eight or a six five or something of that ilk. But if you're going to trend more to medium and larger game, you're probably going to go with, in my opinion, the odd six. Yeah. So I guess in this conversation, which is fairly academic, and thank God we don't have to select just one for the rest of our life. No kidding. Yeah, <laughs> you can you can yeah, you can sure. limit yourself. So then, all right, maybe I'm just going to forgo shooting prairie dogs and coyotes or something. Well, I guess you could shoot a coyote with a thirty odd six. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna throw the thirty out six with the hundred eighty grain interlock in the mix there. Yeah, and you could get a handful of prairie dogs before your shoulder hurt. Yeah. Well, so <laughs> yeah, you'll be sparing on what you shoot. <laughs> I'm gonna throw this out there, uh, uh, and I wish he was here to answer this question and also to uh, enjoy the story. But I'll paraphrase it as best I can. So our f- favorite ballistician, Jaden Quinlan, uh, grew up in Southern Colorado, out on the ranch, and his first rifle was a uh, 22 Magnum, mm. and because ammo is a little more expensive than 22 Long Rifle, he was very selective in what he shot and how he shot. Well, th- in that progression, and you got a, a 223 Remington 700, yeah. and then he got the .30-06. So he shot prairie dogs regularly and coyotes regularly with the .30-06. Yeah. Throughout his junior high and high school days, he traveled the countryside with his 30 out six and would shoot uh i'm gonna call it off brand 180 grain ammo yeah and uh yeah we i had to drive to wyoming with him one time many years ago and we i heard all about this and how in hindsight what was i thinking like i could have taken almost anything but would go lay on a prairie dog town for a day with 30 and six. take 30 out six yeah i had a seven mag as a teenager oddly enough in nebraska where Everybody had a 243. That was the Nebraska cartridge back then because mm-hmm. you can shoot prairie dogs, coyotes, and deer. Nobody was really concerned about elk hunting necessarily with that, but yeah. that was mm-hmm. the deal. And I had a 7 mag, so that's what I had and that's what I used. But yeah. a little punishing on a prairie dog. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that I hit very many of them anyway, but yeah. Uh, well, Joe Thielen could share in that as well if, if Joe was here because that was one of his first rifles, a Ruger M77 7 mag. Yeah. And for prairie dogs, he loaded 120 grainers, and for elk, it was... 154s and uh yeah a little overkill for some of the things interesting stat right now as we sit there's been four people asked this question on the podcast two of them will air later on Mm -hmm. and out of the four three people have said 30 out six whammy Mm -hmm. interesting all right but this is a conversation like we were talking about before we started recording i mean i've been you know debating this in my own mind since i was probably 14 i think somewhere Mm -hmm. in there yeah. You know, pouring over to catalogs and numbers and ballistic. Because you're always looking for this perfect gun and perfect cartridge that would do everything. Yep. And uh, it's tough. I don't know that there is a perfect, but there's definitely not. perfect for certain things. And then you're going to have to make compromises. 
But you do with anything, though. I mean, absolutely. You know, you want to shoot this cartridge. Okay, well, it's good to let's say four hundred yards. Okay, well, now you want something with more energy. It might you're going to give up something on the on the low end when you're trying to shoot mm-hmm. coyotes or prairie dogs. So there's always some kind of yeah. give and take. Well, in the trade off, we're talking about matches and hunting. How we like to do both. The perfect match cartridge isn't a perfect hunting cartridge and vice versa. You know, not many people are going to be running six dashers out there on an elk hunt or a deer hunt. So just like there's not many people shooting seven mags for PRS. Mm. So yeah, yeah, there is quite the trade off. Look at this. A hundred free bullets when I buy these select Hornady reloading tools. Wow. 500 free bullets with certain Hornady reloading presses and kits. Well, what do they have? Let's get loaded. There's no better time to stock your reloading bench. Choose from the most durable, precise, and convenient tools on the market and receive free bullets to get you loaded. Visit Hornady.com for further details. Next time we get loaded, I'm buying. So I'm I'm going to answer this question just so I can say it and be done with it because I've been thinking about going back on what I thought I was going to say. <laughs> so I just I'm I'm going to stick to my guns here. Oh. So very similar to you guys, there's the the match that, that we all enjoy doing, although we don't do near as much as we want to or as much as we could. And then you start throwing kids and extracurricular sports and all kinds of stuff. Uh, weddings, and, graduations, weddings, whatever else yeah, we had last yeah, week. Yeah, it's like, man, I don't shoot a lot of matches anymore anyway. So that kind of brings down, you know, how much weight I put in that. And then on the other side, you have hunting. And, okay, everybody likes to shoot deer and prairie dogs and coyotes and elk and then you start looking into other areas of the country that we don't have here like black bears for example or brown bears or going for caribou or sheep or anything Mm. else you know african plains game really makes it a complex question and so i broke it down to first started with the bullet i know i want to shoot matches so i want a match accurate bullet and i also want to hunt with it so there's no better choice than the eldx bullet which fills all of those gaps very very nicely match accurate bullet we hold it to our match accuracy standard um, it's got the heat shield tip uh, like i said they're accurate and then they hit they hit like a hammer for lack of a better term they get amazingly consistent terminal performance from close range to long range so it's a no-brainer you go with an eldx then the caliber question came up do you go six five seven or thirty and i don't think i'm going to go anything bigger than thirty the way I narrowed it down was for the 6.5 caliber, I could shoot an NRL hunter, I could shoot PRS, and I'm good up to and including elk. So that uh, would, And if you're a Caramojo Bell, I think you can shoot elephant with it, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the 6.5 PRC for me was one of my contenders because over the Creedmoor, I'm getting the added velocity, decreasing barrel life, but... Hey, That's not part of the equation. Part, not part of the equation. So I get more added muzzle velocity, so I'll have extended range performance of that same 143 grain mm-hmm. bullet. And then when I started thinking bigger animals or bigger animals at range, man, maybe that 6.5 caliber is just a little bit small. So we jump to the 7 or to the 30, and I think for what I feel is right for me, the 30, just a little too much recoil. You know, when you start looking at 300 Winchester short mags, 300 PRCs, things of that nature, which would be good for the hunting or ELR type stuff, you're going to increase the recoil. So I think we're all, we all know where this is going. We all know where this is headed. (laughs) And before I mention it, we just talked about it today. Uh, Jonathan Barry, John? Yeah. 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 Jonathan Barry shot a PRS match with a seven PRC. Yeah. And did well. And broke the top 15. Yeah, he's going to shoot it at the Hornady U- match in yeah. Utah. Yeah, so all I have oh. to say is it's the nut behind the bolt that wins the match, not the cartridge. So, yes, I think what fits the best for me, I could shoot NRL Hunter. I don't. I maybe shoot two PRS matches a year. I could shoot it then, and then I feel way more comfortable in all of the hunting that I've done so far and all the hunting I will do, 7 PRC with a 175 ELDX. Touch blue, make it true. I hate that you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're making a lot of sense right now. Yeah, all of that makes sense. Well, you, I mean, all three of these answers yeah, still makes a lot make of sense. You'll have to have two magazines per stage, but... 
That's all right. <laughs> you just let the industry catch up. There's going to yeah. be. No, I'm there, just kidding. I, no, there's five rounders. Yeah. yeah. You, yeah I you, doubt there's going to be 12 round. You mag. might have to just single feed a couple. It's yeah. all right. I got a seven, but no yeah, 10. Yeah. That's going to say seven rounders. I digress. Again, I, I don't shoot very many matches. And for the NRL Hunter stuff. NRL Hunter, I think it'd be awesome. It'd be plumb fine. You could download that thing to. Uh, if you want to game the game in that mm-hmm. thing, run 180s at 3,000 feet per second. And clean house yeah that's flat and not that worry is. about the wind yeah, yeah. not just i still think that 175 eldx although it's not near as efficient as the 180 eld match i still think incredible ballistics oh, the terminal sure, performance sure. to spare it really is a uh, i think a good balance and you can hand load for it reduce the velocity reduce the recoil heavier guns lighter guns shorter barrels longer barrels i don't know that's I'm not you not sticking going back. with it. Your final sticking. answer. That's final answer. Yeah, it doesn't help that he helped design it or anything. Yeah, I was <laughs> gonna I say. Was, yeah, yeah. I was biased going <laughs> yeah. in, but it really does. Despite my involvement with the development no, process, you're right. it, it, it makes some sense. Yep. Now this yeah. is this is the part of the your show. Your main focus is hunting. That's true. Right. Yeah. Now you're and, right. You're right. And yeah. my my focus over the last probably three years with matches have been to supplement my skills as a hunter. Right. So early yeah. on, 2013, 14 time frame, 2015 probably, I was into shooting matches for the sake of shooting matches. And then starting around 2016 or so, 2017, when you throw, started having kids, got a young family, shooting those matches makes you a better hunter. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily hunter, but it makes you a better rifleman, which correlates to exactly. more yeah. tags filled. So for me, that's, yeah, that's, that's where I put it. So I'm, I'm excited about this part of the show because we get to hear from, Mike Whitey Jensen. Yeah. Whitey, we've, I've let you I, wait till the end because we ambushed you. Because I'm going to be a knob duck here. I'm, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, well probably set everybody <laughs> up. He's got probably shot every cartridge under the sun. Well, well I mean, I started, some I, yeah, I started with like a 6.5 by 55, you know, the old Swedish Mauser. I had a, my uncle sold me one. And I use that for deer and, and prairie dogs, you name it, any, mm-hmm. anything that deer, deer sized critters. And that's, basically what we hunted back then you know back when i was a kid but you know since then you know then i moved into handgun hunting and and of course i shot silhouette for a long time because that i wanted to be a better handgunner and so that was my that was my hunting tool i i hunted with well i started out with 357 and went to a 454 and 480 and, and i've got a 475 now a line ball so that i use quite a bit too but uh so and and then of course i started uh hunting these these hunts where you go and you spend a lot of preference points and takes a lot of time and what have you so i decided oh, i better start hunting with something lo- with i got some range long range capability because i don't want to just walk away from every critter Mm -hmm. if it's if it's a good one so i started and i moved to a 270 which which i like 270s i would like to have i'd like to go back to old woodstock the old classic classic woodstock rifle you know because i'm kind of old school guy but since then i've and i've hunted sheep and mountain goat and what have you with various different rifles i guess right now i'm shooting a 300 wsm in a in a with the cx bullets with the 180 mm. cx love it and it works good uh daughters we've killed moose and mm-hmm. everything with it but uh so that being said is the handguns out of the question no the handguns There's are one in cartridge. See, and that's just Ooh. one cartridge and so it I'm kind of, I've, I've, I've evolved back into handgun hunting. So I've started doing more and more handgun hunting again. And, uh, my goal is to kill moose and, uh, <laughs> and a few other things with a handgun. So um, we'll give it a whirl this year again, but probably if I had to pick one, one cartridge and I could have multiple guns in it. Yep. Oh yeah. Infinite guns. I mean, it'd probably be a 454. Mm-hmm. Gasool. Gasool. Wow. 
I, I don't know. I could put it in a rifle. Yeah. I can put it in a lever gun, maybe. Mm-hmm. I could put it in a... He's gaming the game. Yeah. I like it. So, and my right now, I'm in a position where I'm trying to hunt more bigger critters like uh, water, water buffalo and bantang. I was my, my kind of my list. For, yeah. Brown and bear. And then a moose. Yeah. And I'm going to chase a brown bear. So. With the handgun. Yeah. We did a little bit the last uh, when I was mountain goat hunting. We did a little brown bear hunting with it, but we didn't have one that come that was big enough, I guess. Guy kept telling me it's too small, <laughs> which I'm thinking, yeah, geez, eight foot bear is seven and a half, eight foot bear looks pretty big. When yeah. You're yeah. <laughs> well, especially if the only thing between you and it is a handgun. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm going to probably go back towards handgun hunting. If okay. I had the only cartridge I could have, I could probably, yeah, I'd probably use that and then I'd probably. Of course, of course, there you go. Got to add a bullet into it. Yeah, um, I was so going to say we can't forget, forget that. So I haven't, I haven't added the bullet, so it's kind of picking the four fifty four because it, it might be easier to find ammo for around around the world, different places. Not an easy cartridge to find, but. Let's just say hypothetically, you work at Hornady and you can get as, many, <laughs> as much as you want. Yeah, that is the. Yeah, that <laughs> well, is the situation. So if. If I was looking at that, it would probably, I'd probably switch over. And I mean, this is an odd, odd thing, but probably don't make a lot of sense, but it does to me, I guess, 475, mm. the 475 line ball. Cause then I would, I could put that in a rifle, lever gun. I could, uh, it's got and more I could energy shoot a 400 and I shoot a 400 grain bullet. Mm-hmm. And that's what I shoot out of that. So that's make you feel better if there was a and that would be a lot better if I had a moose or a brown bear or Mm -hmm. a buffalo, Cape buffalo or something like that. It would be a lot easier. Yeah, be a little better pick, I think. And I, I had anticipated him going the handgun route when we talked to him (laughs) this morning about being on the podcast. And not everybody knows Whitey like we do. For the listener, uh, if they listen to, is it episode five? Four or five? It's early. Yeah, episode four or five. Ne- we nearly have, a century of service. Yeah, nearly a century yeah. of service between you and, Lowell. and Lowell Hawthorne. So it's a great podcast. Yeah. Check that one out. But Whitey is very much a craftsman in every aspect of the word and in also in everything that he does, not just here at work, but <laughs> in building guns and pouring concrete and working with wood, like you name it. So some Toyota of his hand, land cruisers what yeah, Toyota yeah land cruisers. Cruisers. land cruisers some of his land. handguns though are just um, amazing where he builds the cylinders he chambers the cylinders he's got what is it a doll sheep i got I, I put doll sheep grips on my mm-hmm. uh, 454 your last last fall yeah. and that just doesn't happen you don't just buy doll sheep horns and then <laughs> screw them on like we go to packmire and get grips and you know you just take the screws no, up with the no, screws I, in as uh, in as in fairbanks well, last year I took my daughter moose moose hunting. She killed her moose. After she killed her moose, we went into Fairbanks and and there's a, a gunsmith or a, not a gunsmith, a, a knife maker. Mm-hmm. He's uh, Mark Knapp. Knapp. He's a world renowned gun or knife maker. Anyway, he's got all kinds of different types of of sheep horn and and. Uh, mammoth tusk and mammoth oh, wow. stuff like that he's got all kinds of materials like that that he makes knives out of so that's where i stopped and i bought a couple of shed uh sheep horns that's cool nice yeah. concealed carry personal protection or home defense only the best will do critical defense ammunition developed to provide the best performance for personal protection no matter what platform you choose delivering consistent reliable performance every single time when lives are on the line only the best will do hornady critical defense ammunition all right so now i'm going to throw a wrinkle into it although not much of a wrinkle uh just going to add some depth to what we've already talked about so uh I would just like to hear maybe one or two rifle configurations that you would build in your given cartridge. Uh, you know, barrel length, barrel material, maybe stock configuration, optic, maybe the zoom ratio, kind of 
muzzle brake suppressed. Just what you're thinking for a couple different setups. We already know what cartridge we all selected. Walk us through real quick what a what a maybe one or two different rifles would look like for you. Preston, we'll just go the order that we mm. answered the question. Well, my max gun would be 20 to 25 pounds in a manners or a foundation or some sort of a chassis. Mm. Uh, probably 26 inch, probably no contour or heavy, you know, con- rigid mm. contour, uh, stainless barrel with some sort of an action. I like a lot of them. Um, Impact, great. American Rifle Company, uh, Zermatt, you know, there, there's a lot of good ones out there. Sure. Just one that's known for reliability in the match world. Uh, I'd have, probably have a very light trigger on it. Uh, and the scope would be Gen 3, Vortex, or Tangent Theta, or Collis, any any of the top of the line scopes out there. Yeah. Loophole Mark 5, 7 to 35, something like that. And then my other gun, and I think I would have two barrels for my hunting gun. I was thinking about this. Ooh. For western hunting in the mountains, not where we're at, in the mountains, I'm going to have a 24-inch carbon fiber barrel, and I'm going to run it braked, maybe 26, and I'm going to and I'm going to feel okay doing that because I'm a short barrel guy, maybe not as much as you, but maybe more. Sometimes. Maybe more. I, I don't, don't know. know. <laughs> Your PRC barrel shorter, real short. Six five. <laughs> yeah. So I'm okay with that because I'm not going to run it suppressed, knowing that I may have to extend my range. Because remember, I have a 308, right? So the pumpkin I'm, chunker. I'm, yes. So more velocity, please and thank you. For around here, it's probably 18 inches mm-hmm. carbon fiber yep. in some sort of a lightweight, uh, you know, s- stock with a vertical grip. Excellent. Yeah. Simple. All right, Neil. 30 yacht six, 180 grain bullets, one or two rifle kind of just general setups. You don't have to get too specific. Just kind of what system fits you. Well, I own one of them. It was the first. First gun I ever kind of put together or built back in the day when I started working here with some help from, uh, you know, another pretty famous guy named Dave Emery. Mm-hmm. Never heard of him. Yeah, never, never heard of him. <laughs> um, yeah, it was cool. So it ended up being a 30 out 6. It's a Ruger M77 action because I wanted controlled round feed. Sure. I mean, it's I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's what we grew up reading about, right? Back in the day in the... 80s and 90s that's that's that was a big part of the hunting conversation Mm -hmm. so anyway it's a ruger m77 it is a uh it's a wiseman barrel yeah i think it's a wiseman barrel uh fluted Mm -hmm. not threaded wasn't a thing so much back in those days uh hs uh precision stock uh standard ruger bottom metal a timney trigger and a loophole bx3 Standard three and a half duplex. To 10. Yep, yeah. that's it. It's and about I, as classic as you can that get. Is, and that's I took, Americana. <laughs> that I, is. I took that rifle, and the first time I went to Africa, I went to Namibia, and uh, I think we were shooting Super Performance then with the GMXs at the time. Oh, yeah, 2009. And the top of the duplex post was like right around 400. So, unfortunately, you show that you can hit this box at 400 with your. You yeah, know, this setup back then, they're like, "Oh well, we don't need to get close to anything." You know, <laughs> four hundred. That's where we'll. That's where we'll start. Yeah. We don't even care. Yeah, we'll just come up over a dune, and then you can shoot at one. So yeah, and that thing worked great. Shot a kudu, a couple of springbuck. Uh, oddly enough, a couple of gemsbuck, uh, steenbuck. I mean, worked phenomenally. Again, that was with the GMX. Yeah. Uh, in my combo, I'd I'd probably say that one eighty would be a great choice because you're going to air on a heavier bullet just a little slower velocity you get more penetration um you still got a big heavy chunk of of bullet that's going to do a lot of terminal damage Mm -hmm. um and then i guess if i had to do something different i'd probably go with a shorter barrel too uh something that i would suppress probably go with a proof or bart line um carbon barrel so i'd have a 5 8 24 thread pitch on the end so i could use a little five inch uh thunder beast ultra five or something like that Mm -hmm. um Stock wise, boy, a lot of good choices there. Yeah. yeah. Um, but just something handy to to have, probably in a box blind or something like that. Oh, sure. Uh, especially if you're hunting pigs. I mean, yeah. I use that 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 rifle that I built back in the day. Man, I've used it a well, lot. Well, you named it a, a seemingly appropriate name. Yeah. yeah. The switch. The switch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Has the power to switch out the lights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That one. That one's pretty. So it's it it's it's a cool gun. It's one of the first ones that I ever got to put together. Uh, again, with 
a lot of help from Dave. Dave bedded it, put the barrel on the action, did all that stuff. I think he chambered it too. Um, but yeah, so that was a good one. As far as anything else, I mean, okay, I guess I have an 03 A3, so that works fine too. Yeah. Um, you can shoot vintage sniper rifle matches and stuff like that with it. Yep. Um, you could shoot, I suppose you could shoot just standard vintage matches too, mm-hmm. if you want with iron sights, you could, you could do that too. Um, now for my prey dog setup. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 37 pounds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No slouch there. Yeah. 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 Right. But I guess in this conversation, you're, you're again, you're going to make compromises and you're going to limit your ability on some area, one way, one way or the other. So we're just trying to pick something in the middle. And I guess I'm erring more toward medium and big game than I am little stuff. Yep. Will it kill a coyote? Of course. Will it kill a prey dog? Most definitely. But it's going to do maybe a little better on some of the medium and larger yeah. games. Yeah. You know? Awesome. I, I tried to go right in the middle. I tried to. That's yeah. what my goal was. I think the three, I'm. It, it's a compelling argument. I, yeah. None of these answers are wrong because, yeah. again, yeah. thankfully, right. we don't yeah. have to deal with it. But sure. the thing is, here in the States, that isn't a big concern for us. But you go to other countries and some places you can only own one oh. firearm and yeah. one certain caliber or cartridge yeah. designation. So if you have a three hundred eight. I'm going to buy another 308. Sorry. Um, yeah. You have to tell us why you why? need another one. And if you want this one, you need to get rid of this one. So that that's a consideration yeah. for wow. people in some parts of the world. Yeah. Luckily, we don't have to deal with that. Yeah. yeah no. For sure. So rifle configuration on the 7PRC and for me, kind of like Neil, I already have one. And when I was working on the cartridge uh, early on, you know, I was kind of thinking of how I would build my rifle one day and then actually built that exact rifle almost well yeah to to the letter of exactly what i wanted which is uh it's a stiller uh tac 300 action with a 20 inch proof carbon fiber barrel threaded 5h24 of course for the use of the thunder beast ultra 5 uh, hawkins bottom metal with a trigger tech trigger and that's in a gunworks magnus non-adjustable stock and i like that because it's got the right grip angle to use for prone shooting but it's also not horribly uncomfortable to shoot from other positions um, so it's kind of a good blend there and then optic wise currently just got it mounted up for an upcoming uh, trip this summer uh, with a loophole mark 5 3.6 to 18 first focal plane in mill it's just the uh, it's just the, my most ideal hunting rifle that i could ever conceive and then on the match side you have to go 26 inch barrel big muzzle break uh maybe a five port (laughs) all the ports all the all the ports but a big uh probably proof competition contour or you know mtu something similar to that uh, contour barrel uh i'm a little partial to zermatt actions but again there's so many good ones out there impact being one of them so impact or zermatt action and on a stock i've gone from stocks to chassis back to stock so i'd probably have to lean towards something like a manners t2a uh stock for a match rifle and seven prc and then yeah big old might be an interesting one to do the the foundation on oh with the you know with them calling it dead you know as yeah. far as recoil impulse well that's goes. probably that what jonathan's shooting yeah. yeah i mean jonathan's on the or the foundation, uh, foundation team. team so i bet he's got the stock you might and need. I think their standard be. fill is like a five pound stock. Yeah, just, yeah. and they fill it with like lead. Or, yeah. yeah. Well, and they well, got all the brass stuff in okay. the forehead. And they you can do fill f- it with fill. They do feel different yeah. when you get behind a foundation stock. There's you can tell that there's something different going on mm-hmm. there. So maybe that'd be a good option. Might be a nice test. Yep, might be. A, a it's called good John test. Kyle. I need the heaviest one you to, got. You're gonna have to build one now. Yeah, you know what? Just work on the curls. You know, because you have to carry that sucker. I might have to build one. Might and have then to be I could, 30 pounds. I could get a, <laughs> another barrel and run it for NRL Hunter. Yeah, and you'd be great for ELR, too. Yeah, yeah, ELR matches. I'd just start Which, going down to Kansas, getting into that. Yeah. So those would be my two configurations. Can't wait for to spend his money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Let's spend Mike's money. Mike, yeah. walk us through yeah. kind of what your revolver setup looks like. in. Uh, in it's, it's one he's built. In the yeah, 475. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I've got the, uh, it's uh, just under six inches. Uh, that's what I've got on there is the, the freedom arms. Mm-hmm. Of course, I'm kind of a, I'm kind of narrow minded when it comes to handguns. I think freedom arms is probably would be my choice of if I'm going to go revolver. Uh, but if I was going to build it in a rifle, 
you know, I said I threw out the lever gun, but probably when it come right down to it, I'd probably go to a falling block mm. Mm. action, yep. maybe a Ruger number one. Yeah, or Ruger something. number one makes a and lot of sense. And then put some nice wood on it, and then probably a, a variable scope on that one as far as to run probably something like Swarovski or something. Mm -hmm. Love them guns. Love the, love the Swarovski. They're so clear and yeah. good. But uh, as far as on my handgun, I'm running a, a Delta Pro. Oh, yeah. Red Dot. Red Dot yeah. site. I'd like to try maybe that uh, Trijicon. I think Trijicon mm. makes one with a with a one MOA dot on there. That oh, a little finer aiming little point. A little finer aiming point. Mm -hmm. You can still, you know, with my... 454 or, or even that one there i can i can still put them into the palm of my hand at 100 yards so you know of course i'm going to be way restricted as far as range compared to what you guys are going to yeah. be set up for but i kind of like close work anyway yeah well if you end up building a ruger number one or uh, another we'll have to have a podcast just dedicated to that because that'd be cool in 475 <laughs> yeah, line how to build it yeah i guess Something i should like. say yeah so i didn't go into enough detail the switch is uh so it's a 24 inch barrel. Yep. Because I wanted all the velocity I could get and stainless steel. So that was a big deal. Had yeah. to be stainless steel. And it's steel. got a cool look to it. It's yeah, it's been, quite classic it's looking. Been, it was in the HS Precision catalog. Many oh, yeah. Years Josh ago. had it in there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that, it just looks like yeah. your quintessential custom built hunting rifle with yeah, the booted barrel, stainless. It just looks yeah, nice. Yeah, it's cool. Timney trigger. That helped a lot too. Yeah. But yeah, it's, and it shoot. Oh, so I uh, shooting it one time. And normally that gun shoots little clover leaves, just with under an inch, you know, little clover leaves. Doesn't matter what you want to shoot out of it. Just sub minute of angle clover leaves. So then I'm shooting it for something we we're going to go do, or I was going hunting or whatever, and it was loose. I'm like, oh, man, what is going on? So you start to doubt yourself. I'm like, oh man, maybe something's wrong. I'm not shooting yeah. well. What's the deal? Yeah. Try again. Another loose group. Tried a different load, loose group. Didn't even think about it at the time. Start working on the gun. Tighten the action screws back to clover leaves. You know, it's like oh. that gun just, you grab it every time it's going to work. And that's something that you want to have in everything you've, you've yeah. got. Really. Supreme confidence, yeah. confidence kills. There's several guys in the office, including Neil, that have 30 out six, like custom rifles. Like yeah. that are their go tos. Yeah. Mine's got one as well. Mm. <laughs> well then, then the other one's the God Gun. That was a go to as well. Wow, that yeah. 300 PRC. Yeah. That's another yeah. go to. That really is, uh, that's like the, it was stuck in a rock and you grabbed it. Yeah, it's really like Excalibur, it man. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. How, so, I mean, I've loaned it to people. People have used it. It's killed a bunch of elk now, and it just, it works all the time. But I've yeah. shot it. Uh, I shot it uh, during a shoot one time, a video shoot, you know, yeah. for a commercial. And on the 100-yard berm, there are just bits of clay pigeons just sitting there. Yeah. And it wasn't sighted in for this, but I threw 190-grain outfitter in there with the CX, and I just picked apart those tiny pieces of clay pigeon i was just yeah. hammering them with that yeah. gun and that's what you want it i mean you want, shoots. you want confidence with what you're doing here so mm -hmm. when you have something that works it's tough to yep. stray yep awesome that's a good one mm. well you guys heard it here first you've got 308 winchester 178 grainy LDX. with 178 ldx's 30-06 with 180 spire points 7 prc with 175 ldx's and out of nowhere, 475 <laughs> line ball with the 400 Out grain XTP nowhere. mag. <laughs> Excellent. Well, guys, thanks for the conversation. I've, I've enjoyed uh, this kind of banter, and this goes on. Obviously, we record it for the podcast, but this goes on around the office. Every day. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 you could be walking through the bullet plant, you hear this conversation. You go down to the accuracy lab, you hear the conversation. You go to distribution. They're talking about the same stuff, so and we've been all and all of us have been doing it since we we're little guys too. So yeah. that's the thing, right? Right? Yeah. 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 You bring up the two seventy. That was my first cartridge. That was my first it rifle. Is, I mean, it's hard to. It's well, you hard probably to, grew up on Jack O'Connor stories. I mean, that's oh yeah, the way it was. yeah, yeah. I, I saw it was, in, uh, the, in the book White Tail Deer Hunting. It had the best ballistics next to the twenty five out six really? in I mean, that it, book. It is. Oh it is. yeah. So I picked it. Yeah. You should. Well, she still had it. Don't have it anymore. Yeah. Well, maybe you can get it back. For shame. Yeah. It's a good thing we're not restricted to one gun because it's <laughs> oh, a great yeah. thing. Can you imagine? <laughs> no. It would be horrible. Yeah. It would be horrible. Well, do you guys have anything else to add on your selection or anybody else's selection or any comments for the listeners about one and done kind of cartridge selection? 
I would just say look forward to the future podcast where we ask where we ask everybody at the end of the show. Yeah, Hopefully yeah. If this you want to hear a nice segment that you enjoy, Jaden Quinlan, Miles Neville, Joe Teelan. A lot of a lot of common voices that you'll hear on this podcast a lot where we'll tee these guys up with that question. So if you're if you've ever wondered, we'll get them pinned down and, and find out for you. And I'd have been happy with all these cartridges. I don't know that I'd have picked the line ball right. myself, but. Yeah. As far as the 308 and the 7 PRC. I think I could make them all work. Yeah, I'd yeah. make them yeah. all work. But oh, yeah. you're just going to give up something someplace. That, yeah. That's really right, what it is. Right, right. Yep. You know. Awesome. Well, with that, guys, thanks for coming on the show. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Yep. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Everybody, hopefully you enjoyed this banter on one cartridge, one bullet for the rest of your life. Obviously, a ton of right answers, really no wrong answers in all personal opinion. But it's fun to talk about. It's fun to work through. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll catch you on the next one.